Hello, Jack here, and in this video we're going to take a look at how the AVR chip and the FPGA chip on the Papilio Duo coexist, how they're connected, how they work together, and uh, everything you need to know to be able to use them together. Okay, so I think the best way to demonstrate this is to look at the Papilio Duo pinout diagram uh, that was kindly made by Dan C. Um, so if we look at this diagram, we see that there are two USB chips. There's this one here, which is connected to the FPGA chip. And then we have this second USB uh, connector that connects directly to the AVR chip. Okay, and then on this diagram we could see this is the uh, this is the standard pinout for the Arduino. So this is 0 through 13, 13, which you would expect to see on any Arduino board. If we go over here and we look at this gray column, this shows us which pins are connected, which one of these Arduino connectors connect to what FPGA pin. So, for example, the Arduino pin 13 connects to the FPGA pin P134. Okay, if we go over here, this turquoise column, it just shows us the standard Arduino pinout. So this is 0, D0, going all the way up to D13 here. So that's the standard Arduino pinout. Uh, now this column here, the blue column, it shows us what pin is connected to the AVR chip. So if we look at 13, so D13 is connected to both the FPGA P134 and the AVR B1 chip. Okay, so the important thing to note here is that if we look at pins 0 through 13, you can see that they're connected to both the FPGA and the AVR chip. And additionally, as a bonus, there's three more pins. So 14 through 16 are all connected to, uh, are also all connected to both the FPGA and the AVR chip. Okay, and then if we go over and we look at the analog pins, so these are the standard analog pins you would expect to see on the, the standard Arduino footprint. Um, they're all connected to the AVR. Now, just a side note, um, this diagram doesn't show it, but it doesn't show it here. But down here, um, A2 through A5 are actually also connected to FPGA pins. Those are the ISP pins, so they, they had to be connected. Okay, now the other thing is that pins 0 through 13, they are 5 volt tolerant. So they can um, withstand a shield. If you connect a shield to them that is outputting 5 volts, they'll be able to handle it without damaging either the FPGA or the AVR chip. Now, uh, 14, 15, and 16 are not 5 volt tolerant. So you need to be careful to only connect 3.3 volts to these pins. Uh, and also all of the remaining pins. So if we look at uh, 17 through 53, we can see that they're all connected to the FPGA. So the AVR is not connected to any of these pins. Um, and they are all 3.3 volts. So they're not 5 volt tolerant. Okay, so kind of the important thing to take away from this is that these pins that are connected to both the FPGA and the AVR, um, you need to be careful to manage what the AVR and the FPGA are doing because it's possible to um, load something, load a circuit to the FPGA that will conflict with the sketch that you run on the AVR. So an example is if you were to load uh, a ZPUino soft processor and then you load a sketch that's going to blink um, LED, this user LED, which is connected to pin 13. Um, if you were to load a sketch to the FPGA, a circuit, I'm sorry, if you were load, to load a circuit to the FPGA that would blink pin 13, and then you were also to load a sketch to the AVR that also blinks pin 13, you're going to have a conflict, um, and it's they're both going to, there'll be a conflict, they'll both be trying to control the pin at the same time. So um, be careful. You want to always know when, whenever you're going to run a sketch on the AVR, be sure you know what's running on the FPGA first. And let me show you. It's really easy to load a blank circuit to the FPGA so that 
you can guarantee it's not conflicting with any sketch. So the way you do that is let's go to Design Lab and let's just open up one of the examples. So let's go to examples and all the Arduino examples are still here. If we went to basics and we loaded just the blink sketch. So if I were just to hit upload and load it to the AVR um, and I didn't have any idea what was going on with the FPGA, what circuit was loaded there, uh, you know, there's a lot of potential for conflict there. So what we can do is we can associate there in the library, in the design lab, li design lab libraries, there's a special library called blank. And what this is, is it's just a blank FPGA circuit. So let's, let's associate the sketch with that blank FPGA circuit. The way we do that is type define circuit blank. So now if we click on view circuit, it will bring up uh, uh, the circuit. It will bring up a PDF view of the circuit and show us that the only thing in this FPGA circuit is um, it connects the Arduino or the AVR reset line to the SW1 switch. So the SW1 switch is right here on the uh, Papilio Duo board. And what the circuit does is if this circuit is running on the FPGA, if you put SW1 in the up position, then the AVR reset line is running. So it's active active high. Actually, I, I'm not sure if it's active high. I think it's the reverse, but um, there's an inverter on this. So if you put it in the up position, it's going to run. If you put it in the down position, it's going to hold the AVR in a reset state and the AVR will not run. So loading this particular circuit to the FPGA guarantees that the only thing running on the FPGA is that reset functionality and all the rest of the pins are in a high Z um, unused state. And what we can then load um, the, the sketch to the AVR. Now, of course, when you load the circuit, we only viewed the circuit. You're also going to want to hit load circuit and that will load the circuit to the board. Um, so let's go back to the diagram and I think that pretty much covers everything. So um, thank you for watching and I hope this is helpful. Thank you.